Captain Foyle hats at the ready now on BBC Two Northern Ireland as the project continues. Whoa. Awesome, awesome. Unbelievable. I think he sold the soul of the devil, so watch out. Time again to drop into the David Mead project, and this is the geezer with his name over the door, David Mead. Is that an L? L? <laughs> yes! Oh my god! David is fascinated with how we think. As usual, his mission is to play with one particular concept of human nature. Trouble is, not everyone has the mindset to cope with it. It's crazy. That's awesome. insane. Hi! It was weird, yeah. How do you do it? This time, David is returning to his greatest passion, controlling the way we think. He wants to unlock the mysteries of the mind. I'm constantly amazed by the human mind, what it can do and what I can make it do. Today, David is going to do a bit of reading. No, he's not off to the library. With this kind of reading, David will appear to use his mind power on complete strangers out on the street. But you know, not everything is what it seems with David Mead. I'm going to stop random people in the street and borrow their keys. Based on the keys, I'm going to try and tell them interesting things about their past, their present and their future. In the first instance, I'm going to try and do that through cold reading. In other words, I'm just guessing. But in the second instance, I'm going to use every one of my skills as a mentalist to try and divine incredible and impossible facts about them. Do you have some keys with you? Mm -hmm. Can I see them? They'll be all right? And it'll be interesting to see now. OK. So, there's chaos and order in these keys. They suggest that you're the type of person that is always saying, oh, is that, was, did I say the right thing, or was that the right thing to say or do at that point? Absolutely, that's correct. That kind of fit you? Absolutely, yeah. I'm going to start off with a blatant cold read. In other words, I'll just be rhyming off guesses and random information that would fit for anyone. Because we have a number of keys off to just one side here, that suggests to me that you're the type of person that Almost the minute that you make a decision, you're instantly questioning it and regretting it. As yeah, if to say, true. is that right? Yep, all the time. Sometimes you'd be sitting maybe on a Tuesday or a Thursday night and you decide, I'm going out and you die for it the next day. Is that kind of. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Cold reading is driven by an understanding that we all share social norms. We all share experiences that are common to everyone. The fact is that when those experiences are pointed out, it seems like an incredible observation that someone couldn't possibly know when in fact they're just general statements. David's convincing this lot he's got psychic flair. But really, he's just using stuff he's learned from books. These are just games to make people believe in the power of his mind, because David's true talent lies in mentalism. I want to show that as a mentalist, you can do far more astonishing and incredible things than, you know, just an ordinary psychic or fake psychic. I'm a mentalist and, and Using mentalist techniques, I can sometimes ascertain a little bit more detail. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them one shake. Ah, OK, right. So, if you were to choose a country that you would love to travel to, I would say most people, most people would think of France or America, because they seem obvious, but you're not most people. And I would say you've probably gone for somewhere like Australia, because that's a little bit off the beaten track. Is that the type of place you'd like to... Somewhere you've been thinking about travelling to? Yeah, okay, yeah. can I think of your husband's name then? Yeah. Okay. Now if you get this, you'll be doing very good. Right, okay. <laughs> is his name, it's very is it... unusual. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say. Now the way that all of these rings are connected, that suggests to me that we're talking about a very a flowing character, a very male character, a Absolutely. pretty pretty hard man. Yeah. So it probably starts with an S or a T, but I would say an S. An S is probably more obvious. Is that right? An That's S? Correct. It is alright. So with S. Actually if you hold out both of your hands for me. Let's just lay them flat there. Oh, it's like... Oh, it is weird. It's like Gilbert. I don't know what it is. It's like Gilbert. I honestly don't... That's... Uh, it's Silbert. Silbert? Silbert. S-I-L-B-E-R-T. Is that a Silbert. real name? Honestly, that's why I just thought I've never You're joking. It. No way. So it's like Gilbert, but with an S? Yes. Right? Yes. OK. David's mentalist approach is definitely dazzling this lot with what seems to be impossible revelations. I thought it was mad. I never thought they would have got my dad's name because it's such such an unusual name. Yeah, because it was so random. Imagine for a moment now if you could go on a date with anyone from the public eye, a celebrity. On the left-hand side, we start to see some of the slightly prettier ones, like this. Well, 
He's rabbiting on, but it seems to be working. So that suggests that whoever this is is also massively attractive, really, probably really fit and well worked. That's it, David. A bit of flattery always helps. We're probably talking about like Peter Andre, someone like that. Yes. yes. Is that who it was? Yes. Oh, they've only gone and bought it. Okay, right. Well, you can share him someday. Yeah. <laughs> not 100% sure about psychics, but as he said, he's a mentalist and he's not a psychic, so his, the information that he gives is accurate. As far as I can see, all readings are fundamentally the same. They all draw upon the same broad guesses. And what happens is the person receiving the reading makes those guesses fit for them. And it can seem like a really astonishing experience. Pumped up with the success of his activities on the street, David has a new thought. Manipulate the mind. As usual, not asking for much. Mind you, I can think of a few minds I'd like to manipulate. Anyway, David is doing what he loves best, finding new games to harness the power of the mind. Or so he thinks. Wouldn't it be incredible if we could unlock the power of the mind? It seems to be capable of incredible things. We've all heard that urban legend, and who knows if it's true, of a woman involved in a car accident, and in the moments immediately after, she's filled with adrenaline and able to lift that car to rescue someone from underneath. Now, that may be a load of old rubbish, but if it's true, it seems to suggest that our emotions can have a huge impact on our physiological ability. With that in mind, I'd like to try and tap into an extremely powerful human emotion, but I'm a mentalist and I have my own techniques. I want to see if I can make a person believe that they have superhuman strength. David has taken to the street on a particularly colourful day. As usual, he's looking for random strangers who have little or no inhibitions. People who are open to testing the potential power of their minds. What's interesting about this for me is I don't want a bodybuilder, I want ordinary people. I'm going to ask random people in the street that I've never met to think of a time in their lives when they felt anxious, afraid, scared, terrified. I then want to see if I can have them harness that energy and that adrenaline and seemingly translate it into strength. Girls, have you any money? Yeah. Can I have some? Yeah. Okay, grand. Now, uh, let me see, we'll use this one, you can take those back, uh -huh. or you can give them to me, whichever, I don't mind. And uh, I want you to sign your name on one side of it. You can do it across a couple of lines if you want. What are you doing, on the arm? Don't be getting that ink on me. You'll hardly notice it on the tan anyway. <laughs> okay, we we'll place it down there in the middle, I want you to squeeze your hand into a fist. Squeeze your hand into a fist for me. Now, I want you to think about a time in your life, think about a time when you were incredibly stressed. A time when you were really anxious, when something was really, really getting to you, when it really, really affected you, and you felt that adrenaline build and build and build. Could you get one in your head? Yeah, have you got one? Is there any way I could know it? No. Total secret? Yeah. Okay, I want you to think about it. Now, it could have been home, school, work, college. Like, oh, wait, this was at school? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah this was at school. school. Okay. Well, I want you to think about the person's name. Think about the person's name that's involved. Is it a name for me? Think of the first letter for me. Say it over and over in your head. Think of the first letter over, over. Is that an L? L? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, okay. Gossiping, uh -huh. whispering, talking crap, yeah. talking rubbish, telling lies. Yeah. Is it like, please, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze? <laughs> open up, open up, open up. Oh my god. Check it out. You see it? Lift it up. Oh my god! Feel that? Why am I crying? Feel that? What's that like? Why did you do that? How did you do it? I was actually crying. I know. I was like tears dripping. I can't believe that. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going to happen when I broke my hand. And how do you do that? At your muscles, now. I want you to say the name over and over and over in your head, just okay. in your head, just in your head, just in your head. Not out loud. Louder, 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 louder. Tina? Tina? Yes. Is that the name? Yes. In, is this a friend, Tina? An acquaintance. All right, okay, okay. I want you to think about what happened. Think about what happened. Okay. Take your left hand, squeeze. Squeeze for okay. me now. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze now. Two hands, two hands. Okay. Squeeze. Harder for me, Portia. Harder, okay. harder, harder. Open up, open up. Wow. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You bent it. It's not just typical of me. I bend everything. <laughs> Did you get your nose broken in the street on the way to a nightclub? Okay, think about who was there. Think about who was there. Think about who was there. Think about the name for me. Think now. Say it over and over in your head, just in your head, not out loud. Over and over and over. It's, uh, is it Chris? Chris? Is that the name? Is that the name? Quickly, squeeze, squeeze. Now, squeeze, 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 I'm squeeze, squeeze. Open up, open up. Oh my god. 
Pick it up. Oh my god. Hold it up nice and clear so we can see. That's the hormones. Why did you do that? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, P, R, S, T. Larissa? Who's Larissa? Oh! Not here, Walt. Not here, Walt. Now, Johnny, squeeze. 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 Both hands. Both hands. Both hands. Squeeze. Squeeze tightly. Squeeze. Open up. Open up. Open up. Oh! Oh! oh my God! Jesus! Oh my God! Oh my God! How did you do that? How did you do you that? Hi! I can't believe this. Oh my God! Awesome! Awesome! Unbelievable! I think he sold the soul to the devil. So watch out. After all that outlet of emotion, David needs a little sit-down to recharge his batteries and turn his mind to even more powerful emotional responses. Up until now, I've been looking at emotions, but specifically the responses that those emotions create. So now I'd like to see if I add meaning to those emotions. Positive or negative, it doesn't matter exactly what response can I get. Now this box is essentially meaningless. It doesn't have a soul, it doesn't have a personality, it doesn't have a life. But what if we were to put something meaningful inside this box? Perhaps this box could become incredibly important. David needs participants with diverse attitudes to physical strength. Physical strength to me is very important because I play sport. I'm not physically strong. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed, it's just the way I am. <laughs> This is going to be a really simple exercise. I'm going to have them think of positive things and negative things. And I want to see if they perform better when they're thinking of positive things than negative things. I'm not entirely sure about the science of it, truthfully, but I thought that it might be fun to see just how difficult it's going to be for them to pick up this box. Scott, you're uh, obviously a pretty strong bloke. Do I like it? Ah, uh, well, we bit, yeah. You're obviously not as strong as me. Yeah. What is it about your mindset that makes you want to get stronger and makes you want to keep working out? Makes you feel good, makes you want to do better. OK. In a moment, um, I'm going to have you think of um, a bit of a negative situation. Um, and it's important that you know that this negative situation is an absolute secret yeah. and that there's no one here uh, that could know what it is. So I want you to sort of scribble one word there to describe what it is. And whenever you've got that done, whenever you've got that one word written down, make sure that I can't see it. But whenever you've got that one word written down, I want you to go ahead and uh, scrunch it up into a ball. And do you find it difficult to get into the zone uh, Scott, whenever it comes to working out, or do you just always find yourself right there ready? The uh, first couple of times is hard enough, but then after you get used to it. Okay, brilliant. So, holding that in your hand, I want you to just right. pick up this box for me. Pick it up until it reaches my hand. Uh, not too heavy. You're pretty strong, obviously. No. You can put it, put it down. Is that easy? Easy yeah, peasy? Straightforward. Easy for a tank like you? That's it. Okay, all right. Um, well, I want you to think now about that negative thought for me for right. a moment. And I want you to extend your hands out like this, hiding it in your hands, right. hiding that negative thought in your hands, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want you to look straight here. Now, I want you to think about when this happened. I want you to think about when this negative situation happened, whatever this thought is. Could be one week, two week, three weeks. Oh, wait, this is like... Whatever this is, is this like four months ago? Sort of four, four, is that, is that what? Maybe, yeah. may, may, what do you mean maybe? <laughs> oh, it was about four months ago? Yeah. Okay, great. I want you to think about uh, where it happened. It could have been at home or at work. It could have been in a nightclub. It could have been in college, in a library. No, this is something to do with movement or traveling or sort of a little bit to do with speed as well. Was it kind of, was it on a road, whatever this is? It happened on a road, yeah. is that right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, let me take this. I don't want to see it. Um, uh, hands up again, hands up again. I feel like someone made a mistake or made an error of judgment or, yeah. um, um, okay. Actually, do me a favor. Uh, pick up that box. Pick up the, look at here, look here for me. Pick up the box, look here for me. You can do it, come on, you can do it. Look here, look straight here. Pick it up, you can do it, come on, you can do it. Go on, scream out, oh, come on, you can do it, oh, you can do it. Come on, let a good yelp out. Come on, you can do it. Look straight here, actually, let go, let go for me. Under the table, under the table. I want you to check and make sure. Come on, under here, I want you to check make sure there's no magnets there. Come on now, Scott, you can do this. You can do this, one last try, one last try. Straight here, come on, Scott. What does this feel like? It's not gonna bother you. <laughs> Is that right? Okay, no. just relax for me, relax for a second. Now, extend both your arms out for me again. Um, whatever this negative thought is, now I want you to imagine now that you could just let this go. I'm going to just uh, really focus really clearly. And if we put this back in here for a moment, I want you to think about now, whatever this was that affected you, you could just let it go. Do me a favour, throw that away. Throw it away. Over your hood, over your hood. Pick it up. You can do it. Come on, pick it up. You can do it. Easy? Yeah. Easy? Yeah. yeah? Okay, you can put it. A brilliant job, Scott. On really. Jeez. Just shaking from it. In a car accident four months ago. 
It was just in my mind, so fresh. So weird. That was incredible. I'm shaking, I need a drink, I need to sit down. You should find it even more difficult now. I don't want to see what this is, but you're about to find this even more difficult now. I'm not gonna say a single word. Try one more time to lift it up. It should feel even heavier this time. It should feel even heavier. Go ahead, yep, go ahead and try and lift it up. Even heavier, yeah. feel a little bit fatigued? Yeah. Sore on your arms and things? Yeah, it should be harder that time. Now I want you to think of a positive scenario. Stretch out your arms for me. And think of the person that this positive thought represents. Mm -hmm. Is it a person you know really well? Yes. Oh wait, so you were up until the left, so that's a celebration, something really exciting, really yeah. fun. Like yeah. a wedding or yes. please like a wedding. Yeah. Because the minute that you have that positive thought, go ahead and try and pick it up for me. The minute that you have that positive thought, okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, and right back down. Who was um who's Norman? My granddad. Oh right, okay. Well, did he pass away or yeah. Oh really? Okay. I got you. All right, granddad died. Okay. My granddad died. Yeah, when he asked me to picture it and picture being back when I found out about it, it was quite difficult. Definitely think your emotions have control of your strength. The more mind over matter definitely counts in that. Up until now, I've been looking at emotions and specifically how those emotions affect the way we perceive things. Now I'd like to see how far I can push this. I'd like to see if I can make someone believe that they've got the ability to unlock the power of their mind. <laughs> Oh my God, what's he up to now? What I'm really excited about trying is seeing if it's possible, and perhaps it won't be, to make two people share one thought, but one instantaneous random secret thought, a thought that I couldn't possibly know and no one else in the world could know. So with that in mind, I've chosen two people who I hope just might have a connection. Okay, you eagle-eyed viewers, can you spot where David's going with this? I feel really lucky because today I'm going to get the opportunity to work with twins. Oh yes, we've seen twins before, haven't we? Rather than trying this experiment on just anyone, the mentalist is deviously exploiting what Mother Nature has created. No doubt hoping that the twin special connection will stimulate their mind's power. I suppose what's really exciting about this opportunity for me is it gives me the chance to push my skills as a mentalist to the very edge of, of what I know I can do. I've never tried this before and I'm just not sure how it'll work. I'm going to start with you, uh, if you don't mind. I'm going to give you a notepad. I want you to flick through it, make sure that all the pages are blank. Yeah. So now that you're happy that it's all blank, I want you to sign sort of in one of the corners okay. of the page, uh, just so that you know that that's your page. Now, Felon, for the time being, just sign your name across the middle of that for me. And once you've done that, go ahead and fold that up actually for okay, me. Just yeah. fold it twice so that it's yeah. in quarters as well. I'm going to ask you to put this glove on okay. the other hand, please. Bit of health and safety, kids. If you're doing any cutting, always wear safety gloves. Don't try this at home, please. <clears throat> I think we would all love the skill to be able to work out what's going on in someone else's head. So I want to play a really simple game today based on the idea that it would be incredible if someone, anyone, would be able to share a thought with another person. I'm going to ask you to now think a thought. This should be a random thought that you're just thinking of right now in this instant. If you've got a notepad on your lap, you will start to sketch, write or draw anything that is related to what you're thinking about. Same with you with the uh, scissors. Mm -hmm. As you think your thought, I just want you to gouge into that page and trim the edges, trim the corners, etc. And it's important that as you share this thought, allow this thought to seemingly travel between the two of you. Now, Felin, I want to make absolutely sure that this is random. Could you do me a favour? Could you scrumple that up into a ball for me? Yeah. And this is just going to make sure that... By the way, are you consciously thinking about what you're doing, about what you're cutting? N or not no, really? No, no, no. OK. I want you to continue and scrumple that up really small. So, Felin, I'm probably going to ask you to stop there. I'm probably going to ask you to leave it there. Off with the blindfolds then, chaps. Probably Let's see what you've done. <laughs> um, OK. So, for the first time now, with me, I'd like you both to stand up. Please. Stand up. I'd like you to turn around and face each other. Now, is there any way that either of you could have known what your random secretly thought of thought was? No, known? not at all. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time, I want you to say out loud, what were you thinking of? A boat. A boat? Really? Mm -hmm. A boat? Okay. What were you thinking of? A cruise ship. You're Whoa. joking. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, can I look and see yeah. what you've done if you just want to... 
This is kind of like a. It was, it was kind of a boatish. Yeah. Kind of a boatish type. Oh, you've tried to write it there as well. Yes, I tried. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. There it is. Yeah. B O A T. Well, by the look of this, I thought it looks like an apple, but. A both of us thinking of a boat. Oh, so you've ended up at looking like looking a an little apple? bit like an apple. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with this. So keep a close eye on me. Yeah. Um, let me just see. I want to do this really carefully. Is that that's your signature there? Do you see it? Uh, yes, that is. Yeah, that is. Okay, the that's a lovely signature. Let's oh, just you. see. Looks kind of like an anchor. Oh my god! Is it? It is. No, no way! You're what? joking me! How is that? It's not even possible. <laughs> I don't understand how I something that even just randomly even, cut turned out like that. That is amazing. Just oh, that is. <laughs> That's incredible. How did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. The more that we unfurled it and the more that we saw where the scissor marks were on the piece of paper, I started to realise that it really was an anchor. I mean, it, it knocked my socks off. It really does seem as, I don't know, as stupid as it might sound that maybe we do share thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Taking the experience of that single shared thought, bearing in mind that they could have thought of anything in the world, there were no restrictions whatsoever. I want to see, given those impossible circumstances, how can I make this bigger? Oh dear, I think David's having what you might call a eureka moment. In view of the fact that they were both here in the same room and that worked staggeringly well, I'd like to see how big I can make this. Would they be able to share a thought across a geographical location? Or better than that, might they be able to transmit a thought? This time, I want to see if one can transmit a thought to another. Because if we can do that, then perhaps, who knows, maybe anything's possible. I'm going to send you out onto the streets, right into the city centre. You can go anywhere, turn any corner, go up any street, down any alleyway. It is entirely up to you. I will have no clue, and you will have no clue where you're going. And then, I'm going to ask you to pick anything whenever you're out there. Choose a random object to focus on, a random object to look at. Okay. It's going to be up to you to try and intuit what that random object is, okay? Right, okay. Feel confident? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Off you go. Now remember, you're going to go out to the streets, you can go wherever you like. And um, I'm going to call you in a few minutes when you're out there, when you're roaming around. And just keep walking around until you see what you like. Okay. Okay? Enjoy. Titan's off. Let's go this way. There's more shops down this way, isn't there? Though you might have a better chance of mind transmission without the hair. Just saying. As he's roaming around the street, he could literally see anything. anything? He could yeah. see a brick that he really wants to focus on. He could see a piece of concrete. He could see a cloud in the sky. So, so this is sounds impossible. Uh, I hope it works, but. The chances aren't very high, so... <laughs> Have you ever tried anything like this before? Have you ever mm. had him think of something and you try to work out what no, it is? No, actually, we never have tried that. Aye, aye. Caitlin's on to something. OK, so I've now got what I want. I want you to enter into this with just confidence. OK. And just knowing that if this doesn't work, that it's still just been a bit of fun. Yeah. And you've already had an amazing experience yeah, so far. Yeah. OK, so I'm thinking the best place I could go up and concentrate would probably be up the top. So if we could head up there now and see, yeah. Hello? Hello, is that Kathan? Hello, it oh, is. Hello, Kathan, how are you? I'm not too bad, how are you? Kathan, have you selected something to focus on? I have indeed. Okay, now Kathan, is there any way in the world that... Felon would know what you're thinking of? Most definitely not. Okay, I want you to stare at whatever that is. I want you to okay. stare at it and I want you to focus on it. And I want you to focus on it deeply, firmly, tightly. I want you to see whatever this is, big and bold in your mind, and just focus on it there. Okay, great, no problem. Great, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. I'm going to give you this pad and this Sharpie, and uh, just for the fun of it, sign, uh, sign the bottom corner of it for me. 
No. If you close your eyes for me okay. and uh, scribble down your first impression really slowly and just trust your instincts. And imagine for a moment that you could receive this thought from Cathan. Concentrate now, Cathan. Are you feeling it, Phelan? Just trust your instincts. You'll just allow the pen to move. And as it moves, I want you to genuinely feel and imagine what it might be like if Cathan was able to transmit something to you. Could spend that ten on a haircut. Just a thought. Because it's only when we trust ourselves that we can help each other make better decisions. Yeah, I can. Feel like you're done? I think, yeah. So, what have we got here? Six, five, seven, one, seven, one, two. This isn't a telephone number or no, a date not of birth or anything like that? Mm, no, no. Okay, no. okay. Hello? Hello, Kathan, okay. Phelan has made his guess at this side. Okay. Go ahead, Jason, whenever you're ready, tell me what were you focusing on? Okay, uh, at the moment I'm holding 10 pounds sterling, a, a 10 pound banknote. Banknote? Yes. So it's got a one and a zero on it? Just it, ha it has, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Do you know what, actually? It, it's probably best if you just come back, but... Uh, I, unfortunately... It hasn't worked. Um, Oops, well, I'm not telepathic, but that Phelan does look a bit disappointed. Yeah, if twins fail, does that make it a double whammy? Slightly disappointed that we've come out all this way and went around, and apparently it's not worked so well. Something to do with it. Anyway, Hi. come in, come in. Thank you for thank you for coming in. Take a wee, a wee seat. Um, what was it again? Will you show me? Do you have it? Or, and did you go to a cash machine for this? Is that what it was? All right, okay. That's really, really, really super, super, super random. Felon uh, had <laughs> got some uh, a series of numbers, so I thought for a while maybe you were looking at like a flyer or something. Right. Or I thought maybe you were looking at what are um, the numbers, actually? A telephone. Well, it's a tenor, isn't it? And. <laughs> Six five seven, seven one seven, seven one. I kept going over that number in my head because I was like, at least. Let me just get this right now. Six five <laughs> seven <laughs> one seven one two. No, you're too unbelievable. No. No. So hold on, you took this out of a cash machine. Yeah, out of a cash machine. And <laughs> what the... so, and this number didn't mean anything no, to you. We, no, not at all in oh any way. Gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's just. So I weird. can't believe it. I That's can't just believe so it. weird. You know? I, just, I feel like giving myself a punch in the face. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's almost like written nearly the same way. You see, the, like the six, and then it's gone up. To, <laughs> so it's just, I yeah, that. I think wow is the word for it, definitely. <laughs> that was absolutely incredible. Even I'm blown away. My job was to make the guys believe that the power of their mind has no limit. I feel I'm kind of shaking a little bit. It's, it's just, <sighs> whoa. The human mind is an astonishing thing that I don't think anyone fully understands. I don't think we really know what power the mind has. And that's my job as a mentalist, to make people believe that they can do impossible things. And the project continues next week at the same time here on BBC Two Northern Ireland. News Night is next, but if you're after some light relief from all that mind bending, all new Him and Her is starting on BBC Three. Thank <laughs> you.